All right, let's take care of this guy. We have 23.3 divided by 8. Now, if we had to do an estimation here, how would you round 23.3? You might round it to 23. You might round it to 20, right? But look what you're dividing by. You're dividing by 8, right? This is almost, it's very close to being something like 24 divided by 8, right? Now, this is a very bad job of rounding, but it's going to be closer to the real answer, I think, because what's 24 divided by 8? 3. Three. <coughs> Excuse me. If I rounded to the nearest excuse me, to the nearest ones, I'd have 23 divided by 8, which is, this is going to be some decimal. It's going to be nasty, right? If I do front end rounding, which is where I take the lead off, uh, decimal, uh, lead off place here, which is tens, and around to that, I would have 20 divided by 8, which again is just going to be, it's going to be some decimal, right? I don't know what it is, but it's not going to be a whole number. But 24 is not that far off from that 23. And so my answer is about 3. Let's see if we get that. So I'm going to slide my guiding piece of paper under here. Make sure you always set up the division correctly. You're trying to divide 8. into the number 23.3. Again, since we are dividing by a, a whole number, go ahead and move your decimal up to the top, move it directly up, and then go and do your long division. How many times is 8 going to 2? Doesn't go in there at all? Does it go into 23? How many times? two times, so that's two times eight, which is, so 23 minus 16, this is where you got to know how to do your subtraction. 23 minus 16 is what? It's seven. Bring down the three. How many times is eight going to 73? If it goes in eight times, it's going to give me 64, and then my remainder is going to be 9, which is too high. Eight times, nine is eight times 9 is 72. So I do the 9 here, so 9 times 8 is 72. Now, I've got a remainder. But since we're talking about decimals, we're not really going to worry about remainders. We're going to keep on going with this. And the way you can keep on going is you can add a zero. So I can bring down the zero and I can keep going. So it goes into 10 once. So that's minus 8. Well, now I have another remainder. Well, add another zero. And you'll keep doing this until one of two things happens. You keep adding zeros until what you're dividing by goes into it evenly, or you start to see a pattern with the decimals. Like if you start to see a pattern where it goes three one three one three one three one, then you gotta stop because that pattern is going to keep on going forever. Well, let's see what happens here. Bring down the zero. So it goes into twenty how many times? Twice. Twice? So this is minus 16. And now we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. I have a remainder of 4. I need to add another 0. And when I do, now it can be happy, right? Because 8 goes into 40 five times. And that goes in evenly. Do you all agree? And notice that when I have these lines behind the page, it makes it very easy to keep things lined up, and it makes it very, very neat. 
because I don't know if you're like me, but when I was doing this stuff a long time ago, my things would start to curve off to the side. One way or the other. I guess if I was happy, it curved to the right. If I was sad, it curved to the left. I don't know. Now, look at my answer. My answer is 2.9125. What was your estimate? Three. So does this seem appropriate? Yeah, this seems appropriate. So this is my answer. Now, you've got to watch out because sometimes the instructions will say this. Round your answer to the nearest thousandth. So if I round this to the nearest thousandth, what is my answer? Wait, what number is in the thousandth spot anyway? The two is. So if I round to the nearest thousandth, am I going to keep it the same or am I going to round up? I'm going to round up. So my estimated answer or my rounded answer is what? Two point nine one three. You guys okay with that? So we look here at the thousandth spot, and the number to the right of it is five or greater. So I'm going to round up. So two point nine one three. Is this an exact answer? No. This is only. A rounded answer. You are to give me exact answers unless I tell you otherwise. Is that okay? Now, let me show you where you see this problem show up, not just here. You might see a problem that looks like this. I say solve, and I give you this problem. I say 8y equals 23.3. If I gave you this problem, 8y equals 23.3, how would you solve it? Remember, when you're solving, you're getting the variable completely by itself. So I want y by itself. How do I undo what the 8 is doing? What we've been doing division. Right, this is multiplication. The opposite of multiplying is division. So if I divide both sides by 8, well, that gives me just plain y equals. And so you see, 23.3 divided by 8, you've already done. And what is it? 2.9125. So knowing how to do division with decimals will come in handy because we're going to start having equations where you have to deal with decimals. Equations where you have to deal with fractions, where you have to use the addition and multiplication properties of equality to isolate your variables.